Yo, legends, how you doing? Welcome! So what are we doing today? Well, um, I'm going to be... We're going to first break down the trailer uh, shot by shot. That way, we won't get copyright claimed or anything. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Guy can dream! What I want to do is just take a, an in-detail look at all of the shots that have been shown in the trailer and try and, you know, put together maybe what we can predict to see or like a, a timeline of or where scenes sort of fit in into the plot. So if that's something that you're, you maybe you don't want to, to know, this is again speculation because everything that I'm going to go over is in the trailer. Okay, so you've got like two paras here. You've got this one and then you've got this one. I'm assuming probably some sexual dimorphism. We, we have to address it. The apatosome seems a lot bigger. Now, if you remember, you had Claire and Owen Grady holding the head of the apatosaur in the first movie. You remember that, of course. If we take this head and just sort of move it down, it's bloody massive. Now, bear in mind, this is actually further away. So if it was closer to Maisie... It's, you know, it's about that big now uh, when it's right next to Maisie. So we have some absolutely ginormous uh, <laughs> sauropod here. It is really big. And it looks like they've just sort of stumbled across it. If we take a look down here, this guy's got his phone out as he's taking a picture of it. So it's definitely like this apatosaur has just sort of stumbled across uh, some sort of construction site. I think, judging from Jurassic World Evolution 2... Our Canadian friends are concerned that many of these wild animals are getting close to their border. We'd like to prevent them from crossing it. And, of course, the new game that came out, Primal Ops. A poacher camp. What remains of it, anyway? This is a group of poachers. Something went wrong and dinosaurs have escaped their enclosure. Because Blue is made up from loads of different um, lizards and stuff like that, and, of course, even in this trailer, you have John Hammond say, life finds a way, um, which was the quote that Ian Malcolm ended up telling him. I think there's a, there's a certain type of reproduction I'm uh, probably going to butcher the name. It's called like something Parthenogenesis. Parthenogenesis. Which basically means that even if there's a single organism, uh, they can reproduce. If beta, if it is a complete copy of Blue's base DNA, that means that beta is original Blue. Now, if you remember in Fallen Kingdom, Blue had T-Rex DNA put inside. Oh, put, put inside, that sounds wrong. Uh, it's had a T-Rex DNA infusion, blood infusion, in order to live, which means that Blue got tainted. So the original DNA that's inside Blue, the, the, the genetic code that makes a dinosaur smart, um, makes a dinosaur emotional, and makes it c commandable in a way, obedient, is still inside Beta, untainted. It seems like Beta is going to be the, the story that's going to end Jurassic World, and it's it's going to be with uh, Beta. I, I kind of want to see a montage of just Owen going up to things like he's wanting a cup of tea or something. He's like. <laughs> uh, of course, at the end of Fallen Kingdom, we saw Maisie leaving with Owen Grady. Uh, we saw Owen Grady building his hut in the middle of nowhere, it looked like, really. And as we can see quite clearly here, um, it's in the middle of nowhere. And it's that same hut, I'm assuming. There's a part of me that thinks, is this the first time they've seen each other? Um, and I'm going to discover things as I'm going through here with you guys as well. It has to be the first encounter, right? I feel like it has to be. Somebody's after Blue and Beta, a company, I'm assuming probably Biosyn, and that they need to protect them from the people who are hunting them. This, this shot here is the introduction to Alan Grant. We'll, we'll cut from one shot and then we'll open with this as Alan Grant walks, keeping up with the camera, and eventually he'll kneel down and reveal that it's actually Alan Grant. Maybe we'll have a pan round and it'll be like, hey! It's Alan Grant. I feel like this is going to be our introduction to Ellie Sattler. He's going to walk in and then she turns around. And then you get the shot of Claire slowly going into the uh, the swamp. Uh, and then we also see that she's not alone. In fact, she seems to have been caught out in the open. It looks like it's made very serious. But at the same time, I feel like it, it has potential to be played up for laughs. If we go to, if we go from this shot, can you imagine her just crawling away and Owen Grady being like, it's it's not a carnival. But of course, Claire doesn't know this. She doesn't know that Therizinosaurus isn't a carnival. Um, and, and this shot as well just has this sort of like, I don't know, what is it? Yep, that's me. 
you're probably wondering. So here we go. This is it. This, I feel, is the smoking gun for what's going to happen in Dominion. So basically, this, as you can see, is a DNA delivery simulator. We're looking at a sequence, as you can see, the yellow DNA strands, and then we've got a red DNA that gets chucked out and then the green DNA gets put in. So I believe that this DNA is Blue's DNA. And they're saying that if we put Blue's DNA into this sequence, it's not going to work. However, if we get Beta's DNA, then as you can see down here, you've got like 98.95%. I think in the trailer it goes up or, you know, it, it probably would. Right after this, this shot. We saw in Fallen Kingdom, Dr. Wu was wanting Blue's DNA. And after it got sullied by the mixing of, T of Rexy's DNA, uh, he was very upset and saw it as a, as a you know, he'd, they'd ruined his design. Because a bit like Claire in the first movie, he doesn't see these dinosaurs as dinosaurs. He sees them as product, as tests, as results, as Nobel Prizes. <laughs> um, so I think he's run this simulation and shown that they can still make the perfect dinosaur or whatever they need to do, um, but they need the pure essence of blue it's either they want it because it's pure it is blue's dna or because it's younger and it's more impressionable um, and if they can then clone beta um then they've got their army of military dinosaurs or whatever they need uh also we'll you know we'll pick apart dr wu i mean we've seen him in all the other movies um in Jurassic world and fallen kingdom very well kept um, suits and all that jazz. Here we see him, of course. He's wearing a cardigan. He, his hair is grown out. I mean, all of these are ways for the movie to tell you what's going on with the character. And I, I, as I'm looking at Henry Wu right now, he's defeated, but basically he's probably a bit fed up. Like we've seen in Camp Cretaceous, he's been more humanized recently. And as of, I feel we're going to see a redemption arc. You know, he just want, he wasn't a bad guy per se. He just was wanting to do his best. In Jurassic World, that was, you know, see what he could create. And Ingen saw him as a, a, a way to a means, an end, and that was to militarize dinosaurs. Dr. Wu was just having fun making, you know, perfect, genetic, amazing beasts. He's still searching for his magnum opus. And that is, of course, Blue uh, and, and the DNA that she has. So... He's coming to the end of his tether, and I feel like we're going to see a redemption arc. Whether he dies or not, I'm not sure. But I feel like whether he destroys his work in favor of saving such and such, I feel like that's a big possibility here. This is the big reveal. Look at this. Look at this. Look at it. Look at it. We have what I assume is going to be the way they're going to get the Mosasaur back into this facility. Or we have still yet to see Plesiosaurs. Or anything like that. So they could even be working on their own dinosaurs or prehistoric creatures in here. This is the helicopter that Ellie Sattler and uh, Alan Grant are embarked on at the moment. Uh, this is how they get into the facility, I'm assuming. But if Biosyn was a competitor of InGen and had, you know, been working on dinosaur DNA for as long as InGen had, it wouldn't surprise me that they had a facility this ginormous. This is where it gets absolutely ludicrous. That is a person there. You can actually see the arm. Look how big this... This is kaiju level threat. Redonkulous. So we got the head nice. here. You've got a body. You've got the legs. You've got the arm. That's a person. That's a person. How big is this? It's... it's <laughs> <laughs> you could sit in its mouth. The actual biggest species of Quetzal that ever existed was this green one. And Quetzal was about the size of a giraffe. Like I said, it's given the Mosasaur run for, for its money. It is so freaking massive. <laughs> Ridiculous. I don't even know what this plane is. Flying a boxcar. C C119. Wow, it's not even identified the actual make of it. Nice. We're seeing something that's been genetically modified. This isn't something from uh, InGen. This is something from a different company who's manufactured this. There, I don't think there was any Quetzal that was the size that this thing can grow up to, which is absolutely ginormous. As it's sort of tearing apart the plane, 
Uh, she pulls back on the th on the throttle or whatever, which basically lifts the plane up, which then creates drag, um, which is why we see um, the claw marks here. It's it was originally, you know, on all fours, and then it got like pushed back. Like as the the velocity increased and the speed of the plane increased, it got pushed back. Because not only do we see these claws, uh, you see scratches at the back where the toe claws are. That's what eventually gets the Quetzal to abandon it. But I think actually the plane is going down at this point. It's lost, it's lost engine power, complete engine failure. It's going down, which is why in the next scene we see Claire, and as you'll notice behind her. There is no plane. I don't know much about this plane in specific, but it obviously has ejector seats. Now, this is Blue being tempted by some meat. And then as soon as this happens, I don't know if I show it. A trap erupts from underneath it as soon as like the, the trigger's being activated here. And then Blue reacts to it. Baby Blue gets stolen and then these guys appear. I thought initially it was an Allosaurus, but taking a closer look at the size of that jaw, there's only two things this could be. It's either the T-Rex or it's the Giga. And the reason why I think it's the Giga is because it's night and the one time we see the Giga is at night. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised. It looks like it's out in the jungle, as you can see quite clearly in the bottom left. The, the, you've got the toe of it, and you've also got foliage. Everything seems to kick off, and I think this is at the end. This is near the end, the final act. Uh, and then we have the Giga. The freaking bad boy Giga. With the spikes on the back that you can see there, and the, the, the scales, it's 100% a Giga. Owen Grady and Alan Grant think that this is a T-Rex because they both say, don't move. We, as the audience, maybe, you know, a, a normal moviegoer, also think that it's a T-Rex, um, but it ain't. Sounds bigger. So this building right here has a weird structure on the top. I don't know what this is, but there's some sort of structure to it, which I'm assuming hidden behind the characters is the way to get up. They run, they peg it, uh, and Maisie gets caught in between, you know, that structure. And then the Giga bites. It's very much like the finale of Jurassic Park, where you had the, the raptors bearing down on our main protagonists. Then you have Rexy come in and save the day. Um, and I feel like it wouldn't surprise me if Jurassic World, the final movie in the franchise, ends it in a similar way to how Jurassic Park ended it with Rexy coming to save the day, which is very cliche, I know. Hold on to your butts, guys. They, they are 100% the same building. 100%. You've got the little weird chimney thing on top, and then you've got the mountains in the background that are on fire. So obviously after this place, it looks so gorgeous, and then it just gets destroyed by the end of the movie as it should. Nature cannot be contained and all that jazz. So I, I just wanted to quickly show that to you guys. It's definitely the same place. The whole Quetzal scenario happens just before the capturing of Blue. I think what happens here is these guys are away. They're doing something else. They're coming back. They obviously get sabotaged by the Quetzal, whether it knows what it's doing or whatnot. They get attacked by it. Beta gets captured. Ian Malcolm's kind of an outlier. Not exactly sure where that's going. Oh, this is so hectic, man. <laughs> I didn't expect it to get this bad. Bloody hell. Mosasaur as well. I feel like the Mosasaur scene could be a prologue as well. We've got that scene, then the Dilophosaur scene, and then that scene, and then this sort of final scene right here. It's kind of interesting because didn't Maisie almost get gotten by the, uh, the Indoraptor? Didn't Indoraptor like jump at her in the staircase? Tight places and metal bars. <laughs> Maisie's not good with, apparently. You kind of almost have this... Like from really cold colors to warm and then back to dark. So Jurassic Park's finale was not at night. The Lost Worlds was. Jurassic World was at night. Um, Fallen Kingdom was at night. Jurassic World Dominion, I'm assuming, is also at night. Out of six films, five of the finales are at night. Or at least four so far. If Dominion is also at night, that's a fifth movie. And I wouldn't be surprised if this is the finale. It's the Giga, and then as the Giga approaches, maybe Rexy comes out of nowhere because they've had their revenge in the past. The fight ensues. Eventually they find 
data and reunited with Blue. It's all happy. It does a little dance. Like I said, with World War Z, you had Brad Pitt going to different locations to find a cure or find an answer. And this is Jurassic World's Go Get the Dinosaurs. It's like the cure, you know, it's like capture the dinosaurs. And the fact that we've seen Jurassic World Evolution 2 play with that idea, with the destroyed poacher camp, we see in the new uh, app game, Primal Ops, which is again, other teams that are after dinosaurs. I know that there's a big jumbo jet somewhere and it has Biosyn on it. So I feel like maybe that has, has something to do with it, how they get around. So we have the whole introduction where this is what the world is. The world is this. Moses out in the ocean. T-Rex is wreaking havoc. Uh, Paras are running free. Um, and then we get Owen saving them. Then we go back to the hut. We establish the characters. We have Maisie. We have Blue. And I'll zoom in just so you can actually see stuff. <laughs> then we have the introduction back to the characters. And we have introduction to Blue. Where we see Beta for the first time. We can end with this. Yes, we'll end this whole introduction scene with this. Owen Grady tells Claire that actually there's a company that's after Blue and he's keeping her out here so they can't find her because if they get in touch with, or get in touch, they get the DNA, you know, it's not good. Whenever somebody wants Blue's DNA, it's never good. Then we cut to this. Then we get this whole scene with Laura Dern and we reestablish the old characters. Because of Ian Malcolm, the way, where he is, I think, He's with Biosyn. I think he's already there. I think he's he's on the ground floor. So whatever the establishing shot is for this, and then we could probably cut to Ian Malcolm inside the facility giving a speech. I think we've got the start, but the middle is a huge enigma. And I'm glad because if I could piece together this entire movie, I wouldn't be happy. We've done this either prologue slash beginning slash uh, voiceover of John Hammond. All this lead up, introducing characters, introducing uh, old characters returning, introducing the concept, which is uh, the Pyraptor stuff here, capturing dinosaurs. Uh, then, you know, the inciting incident, which changes them or, you know, no knocks them off course. And then a big enigma to Biosyn, uh, the, you know, the capturing of blue should happen here as well. Yep, it happens at the start I've put. Then this whole Cypress and Therizinosaurus, which eventually leads them back to the facility. And at this point, all hell's breaking loose. Maybe they've figured out Biosyn's intentions um, to make this really smart dinosaur, which is the Giga. The Giga smart, it's bigger than a T-Rex. Um, they've probably extracted the DNA from Beta. It's smarter than Indominus and maybe it can take command. I don't know. Yeah, I think that's all we can get from that. Yeah, I think so too. I think that's pretty much everything that we can gauge. Let's take a final look at our, our progress. There it is. Isn't it gorgeous? The bar BCRA2 code is a cancer tumor suppressing gene oh this is the switch card right this is the switcheroo this is oh we're doing it to um you know prevent cancer or some sort of you know this is a miracle breakthrough a bit like deep blue sea it's like oh well if we you know we genetically modify sharks we can extract the dna to stop cancer from happening sort of brain tumors or whatever uh, maybe they're doing a similar thing with dinosaur dna to make strides in the science, scientific world and realm. Uh, but then it gets turned on them. And they're like, actually, no, we're just going to make dinosaurs again and militarize them. I, I hope they don't do that, because that sucks. I feel that possibly there is another company like jumped into this. So Biosyn, maybe Biosyn actually had good intentions. But this other company is the one that's made this huge Quetzer. They're the one that's made possibly the Dilophosaur. They've also made the Giga. And all of these are bigger than we've seen before. The Giga is the biggest. It's bigger than a T-Rex. The Quetzer is a freaking Kaiju at this point. There it is. It's freaking massive. And the Dilophosaurus is bigger than the Dilophosaurus we've seen in Jurassic Park. And they have to all band together to kill the Giga helping the Rexy get its revenge because it couldn't do it single-handedly. Well, anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it here, but thank you so much for all your support. And until next time, I'll see you later. Oh, bye-bye.